Howdy peeps and welcome back to another video. Today I thought I'd uh, talk about an off misunderstood, um, not necessarily maligned, mistreated and abused tool that we all have. We all have several of them and that's paintbrushes. Now I'm aware most people just think of a paintbrush as a paintbrush um, and to a certain extent yeah, that's what they are. They're a fairly basic tool. Um, some don't realise actually what goes into some paintbrushes, why some are more expensive than others, why some are cheap and nasty. So I thought I'd go through the anatomy, and the different types, how they go together, what they're used for. Now this is one subject what I do actually have some authority on. <laughs> I do actually know what I'm talking about with these. And that's because I spent 14 years working in a, well, working in a paintbrush factory. And this one to be precise, Hamilton Acorn. Um, and if, you want, if you actually want proof, I'll bring it up. Personalised paintbrushes, yes. And I'll, I'll keep this to one side because it'll be easy to demonstrate things on a brush this size than a smaller one. Now, the majority of brushes we use in our hobby, they do vary quite wildly. Um, we'll have everything from a bog standard sable to, I'll take it out of his packet, I'll keep these safe because they are quite pricey. Oh, oh, come on, here we go. A top of the line Winsor & Newton Series 7, which is a Kalinsky Sable. I'll explain the difference between those in a minute. Oh, open the packet up and pull one out. We have our synthetics, obviously available in a wide variety of sizes there's just one I happen to have kicking up well I say kicking about still in a packet we have our oh, oh find one there we go smaller synthetics that's a bent neck there's there is a reason for those some have really long bristles that's also synthetic and we also get, in addition to the standard round, we also have, oh, let's see if I can find one. I'll grab a big one. Big, fat, juicy one. Flat brushes and fan brushes. They all have the different uses. And hopefully today I can go through the majority of what those are. We'll start out with basic anatomy of a brush. Actually, I'll use this as it's a monstrous size 18. It's main, the main assembly is broken down into two parts, the handle and the head. Now, the handle, usually just a piece of wood, sanded or carved or whatever, to whichever shape the manufacturer decides works well. Usually round, uh, sometimes like with these, it's hilarious. I think Army Painter and there's a few others have the triangular which is supposed to be for easier grip I tend to hold my brushes more around here though so <laughs> more like a, I hold a pen right near the nib but they're, they're easier to grip for people with either less mobility less hand strength or oh, for whatever reason they're easier you know, they, and I say these it's a Larry brushes they aren't expensive, they are sable, bristled, and they do last quite well, they do a fairly good job, so can't go too wrong. Right, well, the head itself, getting back on track, is made up of several parts, unlike the handle. We have the metal bit, usually metal, is called the ferrule, or ferrule, and inside that we have the bristle and whatever is used to hold the bristle in place. Now this can vary from, in this case, just a crimp maybe, although I suspect there's probably some epoxy in there. As I said, epoxy to hold the bristles in, 
or as is the case with Windsor and Newtons, maybe not the really small ones, like, uh, well, size zero, like this. But I know the slightly larger ones, the bristles are actually tied and then put into the handle, or into the ferrule, sorry. So they are literally hand tied. They will get a bunch of bristle, tie a piece of cotton around it a couple of times just to make sure, then make sure it's all in nice shape and then put it in. So as you can see there's more goes into a brush than you might think. In the case of this, most of these is probably just some epoxy resin holding them in. It's not a posh epoxy resin like it would be in the uh, Hamilton brush. Um, that's actually a, I think is a trade secret. It's certainly trademarked anyway. Something you will find with some new brushes, this one noticeably, is just how stiff those bristles are and they're all stuck together. And what that is, is the companies will sometimes put a coat of something on there just to keep them in shape during transit. Obviously you now you'll get, as in the case of this, you'll get the protective little tube over the bristle. Sometimes not quite enough, so there'll be. I think in in the case of the synthetics, it's normally a it's some kind of powdery substance. But with the proper bristle or sable brushes, it's usually a wax, normally a paraffin wax. From what I know from full size paint brushes, but they may use something slightly different. But it's that kind of thing. And you can just get that out of the bristles just by giving them a quick rub between your fingers like that, it will come out like dust. So that goes through the basics of how a brush goes together. There are some minor variations, but yeah, it's pretty much all the same. Oh, excuse me, a bit windy again. Oh, and again. Oh, there we go, I got it. I apologise. So now we're on to the different types of brushes with the, again just for ease of visibility, the flat brush, the round brush and the fan brush. Now flat brushes are designed, I don't know, they're a similar shape to the same paint brushes we use to paint a wall with. They're designed for large flat areas generally or just larger areas so you can spread the paint out over you know, they hold more paint they spread it out over a wider area the round brushes are designed more for smaller areas and details um, obviously this one being a size 8 is not going to do really small detail but I mean, you might even be able to see the dust coming out of the bristles from the wax As you see, I've taken it out and it's completely lost its point, pretty much. But you know, it's not going to come to a super fine point just because of the size of it. And the fan brushes, in our case, are generally best used for blending. You wouldn't use this for actually painting something. More for blending in oils or washes, that kind of duty, which is what I... If I had one around here that I normally use, because I can't find it for some reason, I'd probably bend it because it went manky. <laughs> Mine normally end up various shades of brown. Uh, and yes. So that's a basic overview. Obviously, the smaller the brush you go, <coughs> in theory, the easier it is to paint smaller details. For most of what we do as modelers, a size zero, such as this Series 7, is plenty small enough, especially if it's a good brush and it holds a point. Now, I've had this one over a year now, and as you can see it's still holding a good point. Not quite perfect, but it's still in good nick. And there's a way to keep your brushes in good condition so they don't end up like the majority of mine. 
<coughs> where was I? Where was I? I've lost my lost my train of thought again. Oh dear. So yes, brush sizes. So as a modeler, size zero. You might go a little smaller, a, tr a triple zero. I mean, personally, uh, it's just the way I started when I was a wee lad, as it were. Well, not necessarily that wee as a teenager when I was painting the Warhammer. I did start using smaller brushes, so I've gone. So I have things like the. It's not actually marked up, but I do know the size is a five zero, and I've even got as small as, and this one is marked up still, it's an Abtilung 502 which is another Kalinsky Sable and it's a 10-0. Oh. Once you start getting past triple zero though there's not really an awful lot of difference in, in the actual size of the head and the slightest of tremors in your hand will just nah, negate the extras you get. There we are, that's basics. I did also say I would be talking about the different kinds of bristle. Clear up a few myths, rumours, misunderstandings. Uh, not necessarily mistakes as I'm, I'm sure people don't get things wrong or make mistakes or tell untruths on purpose. But one person will say something, then someone else will say something. It's Chinese whispers, people misunderstand, mishear, that kind of thing happens. So with synthetics, most of them, you can see this yellow, or say the white fan brush. Most of them are a poly, or poly or nylon blend. In this case, I believe these are a polyamide, and I believe these are a nylon. Um, there's probably nothing on the packet to say they are. But these ones came from Hobbycraft. These ones came from Poundland for a pack of about five of them. So, you know, <laughs> not going to complain. There we go. Does it actually say makeup, gallery, artistic flair, nail art, brushes, blah, 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 blah? No, doesn't say on there anywhere what they're actually made of. They are cheap and nasty, but they do the job. It's, it's one of these, some reason, I, it's, it's from nail painting, so I guess there's a reason they have them with a bent ferrule. But, it's, I mean, even if it only lasts a couple of models, that's just, you know, there's usually two of these in each of these packs with this kind of tip on them. And that's plenty, plenty good enough for, you know, just basic modelling. Yeah, it's nylon. It'll probably melt if you put anything too sort of strong like cellulose thinners on there, but you tend not to use cellulose thinners when you're brush painting. It tends to usually be water or maybe some alcohol blend, and they're safe then. When it comes to the actual bristle brushes, now in real, I say in real life, when it comes to real paint brushes, the proper bristle brushes, Issuing the really cheap ones, which tend to be horsehair or camel on occasion, they're mostly made from Chinese hog hair. So if you think a uh, wild boar, and um, people have to, you know, that's what the bristle comes from. But in our case, we will get the kiddie fight or kiddies cheapies that you'll pick up in you know, wherever you can, wherever your local cheapy shop is. And again, these are normally, I think this one's probably camel hair. And as a brush, they're pretty damn awful. But they are very, or oh, not very, but relatively stiff bristled. So they can be very useful. Now if you're chipping, weathering, that kind of thing, a stiff bristle, bristle, bristled brush can be useful. When it comes to sable, however, as it's the... Uh, Oh, magic sable brushes. Not all sable brushes are created the same. Now, sable does come from the tail hairs of a mink. But it's where it comes from 
on the minx tail that uh, denotes the kind of sable. Again I use my Teleri and my Windsor & Newton brush as examples. As you can see the bristle looks exactly the same. I should actually say the uh, it's not known as bristle on a synthetic brush, it's known as filament but uh, that's a by the by. However the Italeri brush is sable. The Windsor & Newton is Kalinsky sable. Difference being this can come from anywhere on the mink sail, whereas the Kalinsky oh, get it back in shot comes from the very very tip of the mink sail where the fur naturally comes to a point. Um, and that's that is the difference. So you could I don't know, maybe get a hundred, two hundred, however many sable brushes from one mink tail. You might get a dozen Kalinsky. It's just as a sheer difference in the amount of fur. And that is why and the fact they're handmade as opposed to machine made is the biggest price difference cause in the price in with Kalinsky rather than normal sable. I will pop that back into as you can see you can see by the lengths they go to to keep the brush safe that it's a quality as you can see uh, if I bring it up and get it to focus finest quality so Kalinsky sable yeah. it's and these are the gold standard by which all other brushes are judged really. Is there anything I've left out? Quite probably. Is there anything I've gone over that didn't need to be gone over? Definitely. Um, but as I said it's one of those subjects that can be misunderstood quite easily, quite confused. It's not a problem, it happens to all of us, we all get confused about things from time to time, I'm just trying to clear a few things up. Now when it comes to brush care, this is where it comes down to. Obviously you keep your brushes clean, right? that's easy, easy enough to do, you'd think. Um, but there are certain things you can do to improve the lifespan of your brushes. For example, with sable brushes or any kind of natural bristle brushes, don't use a powerful solvent to clean them out unless you absolutely have to. Don't go using cellulose thinner because it's animal hair and it'll dry out. Now like your own hair gets a bit greasy from time to time. Well, animal hair does as well. We use conditioner. Well, I don't because, you know, not enough hair now, but let's say women or people with longer hair might use conditioner in their hair to keep it in good condition. You can do the same with your brushes. And although this pot is rather manky, as it's been sat on my bench for quite some while, the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver cleans oil paint, watercolour, acrylic and stains. It'll also get enamels out as well. But What this basically is, is a jar of soap. Now it's going to white out on the camera, but there we go. And I'll find a brush that looks semi-clean at least, if I've got one. I think I might have actually cleaned them all out recently. Yeah. See, that one doesn't look too bad. It's relatively clean. What I'll do, get a bit of water on it, and just run it through my soap. And you might be able to see, you might not be able to see. You see the muck coming out of it. As it's turning the soap a kind of greyish blackish colour. 
I'll just give it a swish out in the, uh, my pot of water. And it's cleaner. Uh, this brush has had lots of abuse. Um, <laughs> it's on its last legs, bless it. But if you keep on top of your brush cleaning, um, I don't mean every time you use it, I mean, every, say you finish the model, give the brushes you've used a good clean out. You'll be amazed how much longer they last. The other trick is to try not to get paint all the way up into the ferrule of the brush. Uh, let's find one that has done it. <laughs> this one badly. It, this is one of those little flat brushes that comes with the pack of brushes from Poundland and because it is one of those I've not taken good care of it and the paint has got up into the ferrule and you can see what's happened to the bristle. That isn't just because the bristle was cheap and nasty and has feathered itself out on its own, which it has, but it's also because there's paint jammed up inside there, right in the root of the bristle or filament, which is causing it to naturally splay. And if you can avoid getting paint muck, mire, up that far onto the bristle, up uh, I really should have put my teeth in before I started this. If you can avoid getting paint that far up, your brushes will last longer. Um, that is the number one killer of paint brushes is you get the paint up in the ferrule and then it's a real pig or <laughs> impossible to get it out. So, hopefully, aside from my usual method of rambling and waffling, that's covered pretty much what anyone would need to know about paintbrushes to a sensible level. There is just one more I have hanging about on my bench. That's this. It's a little foundation brush. Really super soft. Yes, I handed in my man card and bought it from the makeup department. And yes, it is really cheap and nasty. But it's great for just dusting off models. Now, has a use. Now, storing brushes. Um, the best way to store them is horizontally rather than vertically. However, obviously, it's difficult sometimes to store brushes horizontally. They take up a lot more room. They tend to roll around a lot. For example, I keep on mine living this bin and yes people who know me will spot the joke um, and I actually believe it or not I had a clear out in this a few weeks ago <laughs> and I've still got this honking great pile of brushes and that's nowhere near all of them on my bench right, so <clears throat> we do collect a lot of paint brushes I don't even think that one's ever been used it's an army painter no nope, that's a brand new brush um, See, but if you're going to store them vertically, store them bristle up rather than bristle down. It's just because obviously, if you store them bristle down, you'll bend the bristles and then you pretty much have to bend the brush. So, I think definitely for now, that's about all, all I've got on the matter. If there's anything I've missed or anything not too sure or anything I've confused. Let me know in the comments and uh, I can try and put it right. As I say, there's my usual fan brush. As you can see, the oil paint has stained it. Um, but other than that, enjoy your modelling. Hope I've cleared up a few myths. Have fun. Rock on. Peace out. Bye-bye.